Have you ever wanted to kick some evil butt and level up into an awesome hero? Well, while there may not be a sinister company manufacturing robots to beat up in your neighborhood, that's exactly what a young hero named KO hopes to do with his friends at Lakewood Plaza Turbo. Hi, I'm Gingerpill with Channel Frederator, and today we're going into seven facts about OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes, the newest show on Cartoon Network. Are you excited? Because we are. So get ready, set, OKKO OK Go! On May 21st, 2013, Cartoon Network publicly premiered one of their shorts from their artist program titled Lakewood Plaza Turbo after it leaked alongside Steven Universe earlier that year and gained positive attention from future fans. Created by Ian Jones Cordy, known for his work on Steven Universe and Adventure Time, plus he voices Wallow in our very own Bravest Warriors, this short would go on to become the series we now know as OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes in four years time. So what's it about? Well, Lakewood Plaza Turbo is the strip mall where KO and his wacky superhuman friends work, selling various things to heroes while they run the bodega. Not to mention that just down the street, Lord Boxman is running an evil corporation to help the villains of the world. Why? Because he really doesn't like the friendship aspect that's attached to the good guy image and will do anything to destroy it. In this original short, we get a taste of what a day in the life looks like for Ko, Rad, and Anid as they take on one of the Lord Boxman's main robot children, Daryl, after he tries to destroy them all. The short gained popularity not just because of its fun premise and video gamey vibe, but also thanks to a familiar voice, Stephanie Nadolny. For those who don't know, Nadolny previously worked on Dragon Ball. On the very popular anime, she voiced Kid Goku, and now she stepped back into the heroic path to lend her voice for Jones Cordy's upbeat protagonist, KO. For a while, fans thought Lakewood Plaza Turbo was a dead pilot, meaning they believed it wouldn't get picked up for a full series. Fortunately, things were about to level up for Lakewood Plaza Turbo. Over the course of two years, top-secret development talks were happening between Cartoon Network executives and Jones Cordy to make OK KO Let's Be Heroes a fully envisioned reality of the likes that has never been seen before. And here's how it went down. OK KO Let's Be Heroes is part of a new wave of original properties coming from Cartoon Network. Alongside Mighty Magiswords, it's one of the first projects to have a non-traditional development process. What do we mean? Well, OKKO's OK development start off with the creation of an app game and minisodes. According to Rob Sorcher, Cartoon Network's chief content officer, making KO into a series right away felt wrong. They had wanted to make a game for a while, and felt that the unique story of KO lended itself to the video game format quite well. Have you seen the short? Of course it did. Chris Waldron, vice president of Cartoon Network, also notice how storytelling across multiple platforms plays a huge role in how modern audiences consume media. If they like a certain story in one format, they probably want to explore it in different platforms besides the show, like in games, comics, and so on. Hence the animation studio released their first ever original mobile game based on Jones Cordy's short in 2016. Titled OKKO OK Lakewood Plaza Turbo, the game featured the art style of the original pilot and combined gameplay with in-game comics that helped push the plot along. The mobile game was a collaboration between Double Stallion, Jones Cordy, and and Toby Jones. You may have heard of him thanks to his work as a storyboard director on a different Cartoon Network property, Regular Show. Double Stallion worked on programming the physical game, while Jones Cordy and Toby Jones helped create a compelling story. Many fans had a chance to play it because it was free to download on both iOS and Android. In fact, you can still download and play it on your phone today. What are you waiting for? Get to it! It's, it's a free app! One glowing review on the App Store said it best. This game is amazing, dude. We agree, reviewer DC Rules. We agree. Alongside this mobile app, three minisodes were released online to help promote the world of KO later in December 2016 and January 2017, and even more would be made and released on YouTube. While Jones Cordy and Toby Jones crafted the story and drew the storyboards, the episodes were sent out to be animated by various animation studios around the world, many of which were Japanese studios. Due to this, each minisode had a noticeably different aesthetic. Some of these studios include Rubber House, Masaki Yuasa's Science Saru, and Yada. Many of these studios are renowned for their traditional animation techniques as they prefer drawing by hand than working digitally. The influence of Japanese animation would also remain in the official series, as the opening sequence is storyboarded by Studio Trigger's co-founder, Hiroyuki Imashi. Not to mention that the show itself is hand-drawn on paper, scanned, and composited. Pretty impressive! Collaboration has always been a huge part of the development and production process with OKKO, OK and sending out these shorts to different companies was the ultimate test of teamwork. The results were great, and watching all the minisodes helps establish the characters and the setting of the series. In fact, Jones Cordy felt that going through the process of making these separate mediums, the mobile game and these minisodes, before diving into the creating of the show itself, helped him and his team understand the story that they were all trying to tell. Not to mention that it helped hype everyone, the crew and the fans, for what was to come. In 2016, Cartoon Network contacted 200 indie game developers from around the world and asked them to imagine a new mobile game based on the short's unique characters. They held a game jam in Portland and stated that whoever presented the best idea would get to produce their concept
concept with the studio. This jam ran from February 12th to 14th of that year. During this time, the developers only had 48 hours to create and showcase their ideas. Talk about a time crunch. You must be asking yourself, well, who won? The grand prize went to, well, we're not sure. Currently, there's a company out there working closely with Cartoon Network on this new game, but who that is and what they have in store for us hasn't been properly announced as of now. Once they do announce it, we'll also get to learn who the runner-ups were for first place and what they had imagined in their visions. Even though only one company gets to work on the new mobile game, according to James Cordy, all developers retained their rights to their codes and were free to use them for personal projects to publish their game as is. Sweet! Hmm. So does that mean there are, or will be, other OKKO OK games floating out there for us to play? Yes please! Let us know if you found one. The Game Jam wasn't the only time the KO team reached out to outside creators. That same year, several animation undergraduates were offered the chance to make micro shorts based off the original short. And when we mean micro, we mean micro. They could only last up to 15 seconds. Held in Cartoon Network's Burbank office from July 9th to 11th of 2016, the studio hosted an animation jam open to young artists. Jones Cordy acted as one of the mentors for those chosen to participate as they worked on producing their shorts. He was excited about the idea of helping students because he remembered being an animation student himself in New York City, trying to find a way to break into the industry. Thus, the goal of the animation jam was to train students to understand how one works with an existing property and helps the world building process through fun visuals. Moreover, it was intended to help these students set a working foundation to one day begin a career as an artist in an animation studio. There were eight teams comprised of students and studio interns. They came from a variety of animation schools, such as those in the University of Southern California, Savannah College of Art and Design, CalArts, San Jose State University, Maryland Institute College of Art, Rhode Island School of Design, and a few others. One notable school that was involved with the animation jam was Exceptional Minds. For those who haven't heard of it, it's an American computer animation studio that acts as a non-profit digital arts school for those with autism. The students didn't come up with their short ideas on their own. Each team was given a prompt that suggested the scene that they would help animate. For example, Anid kicks Daryl's head back over to Boxmore with unintended consequences. While the team was free to interpret the assignment however they pleased, they had to keep true to whatever was written on their pieces of paper. After students finished their animations, Cartoon Network screened them in the office's main lobby for employees to watch. Surely this was a great opportunity for those lucky and talented students. Who knows, maybe one day they'll be a Cartoon Network showrunner hosting an animation jam of their own. Only time will tell, and we'll be there watching if they do. The app game and game jam aren't the only game-centric things about OKKO that are happening. On September 3rd, 2016, Capybara Games, a Canadian gaming company known for Super Time Force and Critic Crunch, announced that they were working directly with Cartoon Network to create console games for the series. Not to mention that Jones Cordy is a big fan of Capybara Games, claiming that it's one of the coolest things they've been a part of. Capybara worked to bring the game to life with RPG elements, staying true to the tone of the show itself since it spoofs some role-playing tropes. It also promises to keep close with cartoon elements, using animated cutscenes and camera angles during gameplay. However, the art style will be unique to the game itself. According to Nathan Vella, the president of Capybara, the game studio never talked about OKKO OK as though it was an existing IP. In their eyes, they were working close with Cartoon Network to create something new. And seeing how the game was in development before the show aired, it makes complete sense. The game, known as OKKO OK Let's Play Heroes, will be released on the PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox later this year. After all this hard work, OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes officially premiered on August 1st, 2017, with a special one-hour premiere. However, the first six episodes were released on Cartoon Network's website earlier in the summer, giving eager fans an opportunity to watch the show ahead of schedule. While Stephanie Nadolny wouldn't be returning as the voice of KO, though we should mention she voices him in the shorts, the cast that was chosen for the series is top material. Here are a few of them. Courtney Taylor now voices KO. Previously, she was Starla in Regular Show. Ashley Birch voices Anid, taking over from Mina Savari's role in the pilot short. Jones Cordy, the creator himself, voices not just one, but two characters, Rad and Daryl. And the legendary voice of Jim Cummings, Pooh Bear, anyone, is the notorious Lord Boxman. Since the first six episodes aired earlier, there were plenty of reviews flying in before the show's premiere. Reception was high, with Den of Geek calling the series a surefire hit. Reviewers and critics alike have noticed all the hard work that has gone into making OKKO OK a well thought out story, and they can't help but admit that they have high hopes for the future of the show. So what's your take on it? Do you agree? Again, I'm Ginger Pill, and thanks for watching 7 Facts About OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes. Which fact did you find most interesting? Is there anything you wish we mentioned? Let us know in the comments below, and tell us what property you want facts on next. We have new videos dropping every day, so make sure to subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell icon to become part of our notification squad. Remember, Frederator loves you!